So on behalf of my uh, co-authors, Barry Berra, Jim Lorenz, Rick LaHaye, and Randy McCula, we'd like to present to you a summary of our work on the development of uh, centrifuge technology for treating fluid fine tailings. So in the talk, I'm going to briefly summarize the uh, FFT centrifuge process. I'll give you an overview of the major phases of our uh, development program at Syncrude. Then I'll focus in on the uh, 2011 prototype including a summary of the program and some of the highlights of the key performance results. I'll wrap up with a brief description of where we're going for commercialization of the technology. So here's a simplified schematic of our centrifuge process for uh, treating FFT. Tailings feed is first treated with gypsum to coagulate the clays. We use uh, dilution as an optional step for density control. We add a flocculant to the uh, coagulated feed just before it enters the centrifuge. And then the centrifuge is actually used for initial dewatering. The cake is then transported to the deposit for further dewatering. The centrifuge produces a centrate stream, which is returned to our settling basin, and that is eventually recycled in the extraction process. So this photograph illustrates the amount of dewatering that occurs in the centrifuge process. So the sample in the middle, the raw fluid fine tails, contains about 30 weight percent solids, and we dewater it by about 50% on our centrifuge process. After uh, processing, the centrate contains less than one weight percent solids typically, and the cake typically contains over 50% solids. This slide summarizes a lot of work in our development program. We started with lab scale testing in 2005. We worked our way through increasingly larger field pilots as we scaled up the process, eventually coming up to commercial scale prototype testing with full-scale commercial plant startup planned for 2015. As well as the centrifuge testing, we tested various methods for feed preparation, cake transport, and deposition. And I'll briefly summarize each of the major stages. Fluid fine tailing centrifuge testing began for Sinkard in 2005 with a lab-scale proof-of-concept test. A bench-scale centrifuge was used to produce a high-quality centrate and cake with a high solids content. The work was conda conducted at Camet Energy Labs in Devon, Alberta. We moved to the uh, pilot scale for a proof of concept test in 2007 with the test done at our Mildred Lake site in wintertime. A decanter centrifuge with a nominal diameter of 0.5 meters was tested. The machine had a capacity of nominally six dry tons an hour of solids. This was at about one tenth of the capacity of what we envisioned to be the full scale machine at the time. In 2008, we moved forward with a major field pilot to evaluate centrifuge operation and to produce a centrifuge cake deposit. The deposit was evaluated for its geotechnical characteristics and its one-year performance was measured in 2009. Two types of centrifuges of different sizes were evaluated in this study. In 2010, we moved up to a one-third scale centrifuge pilot with uh, 2.65 meter diameter centrifuges and 1.9 meter diameter centrifuge. One of the centrifuges was a drilling mud machine and another was specially designed for fluid fine tailings treatment. The main focus was to define critical centrifuge design parameters, to quantify the imp importance of flocculent mixing, and to test centrifuge cake transport and deposition. So the cake transport was a major facet of the 2020 program. Methods studied included pumping, with positive displacement pumps, pumping with dispersants added, trucking with uh, haul trucks modified with end gates, and conveying with standard conveyors. After an extensive test program, trucking was selected for longer distance cake transport on our commercial plant, while conveying will be used for transport within the centrifuge plant itself. Another major focus area in 2010 was evaluation of deposit options and monitoring of dewatering over time. Cake was typically placed in cells in lists of up to two meters thick. Deposits from all the major transport options were tested, as well as a multi-layer deposit. So in 2011, we moved to a commercial scale prototype test, conducted to evaluate the performance of two uh, commercial centrifuges, a one meter and a 1.4 meter diameter machine. These uh, machines were two of the largest commercially available decanter centrifuges available today. The field pilot was done over a three month period from July to October in 2011. Test work was carried out continuously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week over the time period. It was quite an intense test program. Our major objectives were to maximize throughput with and without gypsum, 
to optimize gypsum and flocculent mixing while achieving a target of greater than 95% solids capture or fines capture into the cake and getting a cake with a solids content of greater than 50%. In addition, we wanted to compare centrifuge design options, evaluating a steeper beach design and a shallower beach design. I'll explain a bit more about that later. An additional objective was to quantify operational performance. However, we don't really have time to get into that today. So. Next, I'd like to talk about the uh, centrifuge flow sheet uh, for the 2011 prototype test. We used a dredge to supply fluid fine tailings from our Mildred Lake settling basin. The uh, FFT was screened through a three quarter inch by three quarter inch screen to remove oversize, and then fed into a series of feed tanks. For our prototype testing, we used dike seepage water for gypsum slurry makeup and for making up flocculent solution. Gypsum slurry was prepared on site with a dedicated skid, and we used agricultural grade gypsum powder for the uh, prototype testing. Flocculant was prepared with a vendor supplied unit. Centrate was sampled, discharged into a tank, and then pumped through a flow meter back to the settling basin. Centrifuge cake could be directed either to a uh, bin for rate measurement or to the conveyors where it was uh, transported to the cake cell. For the 2011 prototype, the cake that was deposited in the cell flowed right back into the Mildred Lake settling basin, and we did not monitor that deposit, although we uh, monitored the previous deposits for several years. Instrumentation, such as Coriolis meters for flow and density, was used to collect data on the key parameters. Samples for the process streams were analyzed for uh, simple analysis in the field lab, such as percent solids, and a more detailed analysis uh, back at Synchrid Research and at CAMET labs. So a few photographs to show you the prototype. This slide shows the two uh, centrifuges on their test stands at the prototype site. And then here we have the Boscalis dredge used to obtain FFT from the Mildred Lake settling basin. And photo on the right shows the feed preparation system. Uh, the flocculent makeup plant is in the background. Tanks for holding gypsum treated FFT are in the uh, foreground on the left there. And here the slide showing the uh, tank for collecting our centrate. And we sampled it just before it went in the tank. And the bin that was used for uh, cake rate measurement in the test program. So I'd like to use this generic schematic to illustrate some of the key design features of the decanter centrifuge and talk about how the machine works. Feed enters the centrifuge through a feed tube on the right-hand side in the picture. The outer bowl of the centrifuge spins at high speed up to 1800 RPM. Solids are spun outward to the bowl wall and the higher the bowl speed, the larger the g-force acting on the solids. A scroll or conveyor is used to transfer the solids on the wall to the conical or beach section of the machine. The solids are conveyed up the beach and discharged as a cake out the end of the rotating assembly. The weir controls the depth of the liquid pool in the centrifuge and the centrate liquid discharges over the weir. A baffle disc is used to form a seal with a scrolling cake to prevent escape of liquid and the liquid level is higher than the cake discharge. So in addition to gypsum and flocculent addition, we tested a number of key parameters that influence centrifuge performance in our prototype test. This included centrifuge operating parameters such as pool depth, bowl speed, and scroll speed. We evaluated two different beach slopes for the one meter centrifuge, and we also looked at the effects of throughput and feed density. A major improvement in the 2011 prototype was getting a continuous gypsum slurry addition system in operation. This uh, improved performance over previous batch systems where we're adding gypsum by bags and batch mixing in tanks. Flocculent FFT mixing was found to be optimized with the tea mixer located just before the centrifuge. So then now I'd like to talk about some of the results. The bar chart shows the effect of pool depth on centrifuge throughput. Relative to pool depth is on the x-axis and throughput in dry tons per hour is on the y-axis. To explain, for a 30 weight percent FFT feed, 50 dry tons per hour of solids corresponds to about 135 cubic meters per hour of FFT. So looking at the data, there are no instances of on-spec performance at the shallowest relative pool depth here of 83%. Best performance was achieved with the deepest pool. This was as expected because the deepest pool gives the highest residence time in the centrifuge. This graph shows centrifuge throughput as a function of bowl speed. The square symbols are for the no gypsum data while the blue uh, diamonds are for the uh, gypsum addition data. 
The data shows that centrifuge throughput generally increases as bull speed or g-force increases. Addition of gypsum also provides a uplift in capacity. During the prototype testing, maximum bowl speed was limited to 1700 RPM. Given this, we feel there's still more room for a potential capacity increase with a higher maximum speed. This graph shows how scroll differential speed impacts throughput. Scroll differential speed is actually the speed of the scroll relative to the speed of the bowl. The graph shows the direct relationship between scroll differential speed and centrifuge throughput. Basically, to get more throughput, you have to auger the cake out faster up on the machine. Again, we see that gypsum addition provides a further capacity increase to the uh, performance. Scroll differential speed was limited to a maximum of 30 RPM by the backdrive unit available in the test machine. We think there is more capacity potential with an increase in maximum scroll differential speed. So the next two graphs summarize our throughput results, which is the main focus of our 2011 testing. Centrifuge was tested with two different rotating assemblies, one with the steeper beach and one with the shallower beach design. Our prediction had been that the performance of each beach design, beach design should have been about 36 dry tons per hour with no gypsum addition. And we used that prediction for the basis for our original commercial plant design. Based on our uh, full material balance results from our test program, centrifuge throughput with the no gypsum addition was 41 dry tons per hour and with the with the steeper beach design and 54 dry tons per hour with the shallower beach design. Then this slide looks at the results with gypsum addition. Here are the prediction was 60 dry tons per hour for each rotating assembly. Steeper beach design gave a throughput of 67 dry tons per hour, while the shallower beach design achieves 73 dry tons per hour. Achieving this throughput was a very significant finding for us because it allowed the commercial plant design team to optimize their design and actually reduce the number of centrifuges required by 40% over the original number. This also meant that there was a significant savings due to a reduced requirement for building infrastructure, such as elimination of one of the centrifuge buildings that was originally planned. This graph shows the relationship between centrate solids, sorry, between centrate solids and solids capture. As we conducted projects from 2008 up to 2011, we were able to increase centrifuge feed density from originally around 20 weight percent solids up to uh, 30 to 35 weight percent range for centrifuge feed in 2011. The graph clearly shows that in 2011, we we're able to consistently exceed the 95% solids capture target while still achieving acceptable levels of solids in the centrate stream. Summarizing the 2011 prototype results, we exceeded our throughput predictions for the one meter centrifuge by incorporating major uh, improvements of proper gypsum addition and a shallower beach design, we're able to significantly improve throughput up to 73 dry tons per hour. And this allowed us significant savings in commercial plant design. It allowed us also to uh, define the optimum operating parameters. We still think there's further room for capacity increase with the machines. Based on a short duration test, we're able to get up to 83 dry tons per hour per machine or for the machine. And we think that we could consistently achieve greater than 80 dry tons per hour with the uh, improvements mentioned on the slide. So on the path to commercialization of centrifuge technology at Syncrude, our current focus is what we call a commercial demonstration plant that's processing fluid fine tailings from our Southwest sand storage area. This is being done in a plant operated by New Alta for Syncrude, and it uses eight one meter diameter commercial decanter centrifuges. The plant was started up in 2012, was operating for the full summer season and will continue on in the winter this year and will continue operation until 2014. The photographs show the overall plant layout, um, dumping the uh, centrifuge cake and then the deposit area for the uh, commercial demonstration. Commercial centrifuge plant is planned for startup in 2015. It's going to be processing fluid fine tailings from our Mildred Lake settling basin and construction is currently underway, as you can see in the photograph at uh, our Mildred Lake uh, plant site. So we've taken fluid fine tailing centrifuge technology from concept to commercial in a very short time. We achieved significant performance improvements through our prototype testing in 2011, and it's now equipped us an additional method of dealing with fluid fine tailings. Lastly, I'd like to say that we I'd like to acknowledge that this work was only possible because of the dedicated work of many team members and other companies, and we thank them for their contributions.